and I'm back with a new lesson on the usage of words like under, below, beneath and underneath. Well, all these words sound quite similar, don't they? Well, they do. And yeah, their meanings are quite similar, but they are used in quite different contexts. Um, now, what does all these three words mean? When I refer to words like under, below, beneath and underneath, I am talking about, uh, you know, I'm referring to things that are, you know, down in the downward position. So, of course, when I talk about under, below, I'm talking about anything that is down there. But let's see where we can use these words and in how many contexts we can use it in. Okay, the first one is the word under. Now, the first context in which you will use the word under is to talk about something that is below a three-dimensional object. So we have an example, um, the sentence which is, they sat under a tree. Now remember I said below a three-dimensional object. So anything under a three-dimensional object like a tree for example, then I use the word under. So if I want to say me and my friend, we sat under a tree which is a three-dimensional object then I use the word under. For example, I could have a, a three-dimensional object like a table. I can say that the book was under the table. Or I could say that the cat was sleeping under the chair. The chair again being a three-dimensional object. Now, I can also use the word under when I want to talk about layers of something. So if I want to say uh, that, you know, something is under a layer. So for example, I have a sentence like, I have a t-shirt under my jacket. So this is a shirt. Now imagine if I was wearing a jacket on top of it. I could say that I have a shirt under my jacket because I am talking about layers of something. Okay, so we use under also when we're talking about layers. And then I could say, I could use under also when I'm talking about numbers. So I will say, I can raise under $15,000 or I can do it under seven hours. So if I'm talking about time, which is also numbers, uh, money, which is again numbers, I will use the word under, okay? So, I was under 17 when I learned to drive. That's again when you use the word under. And the last context where you use the word under is to talk about uh, a state of mental well-being or ill-being. So, it talks about your mental state. So I can say that this group is under a lot of stress. Now, my mental state in this case is stress. I can say that I was under a lot of pressure. So we're talking about a mental state and that is when I use the word under. So here, please notice that unlike these, the underused out here is you is talked is talking about a, a mental situation a mental state and not a physical state like these three sentences are okay now we will deal with the next word which is below and see what context they can be used in as i said the word below can also be used in different contexts 
So let's see the different ways in which we can use the word below. Um, let's look at our first sentence, which is the red photo is below the black one. Now, why do I use below in this context? I'll help you understand this uh, by means of a diagram. Okay. Now, imagine this is my wall or a blackboard, if you may. Uh, now, this context in which I use below talks about comparing the level of one thing against the other, provided both of them are on the same plane. Okay? So, as I said, imagine that this is my blackboard or maybe this is my wall, the square out here. Okay? So, I will draw a red photo. Okay? And now we will have a black photo. Okay, well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out which one is up there and which one is down. The sentence says that the red photo is below the black one and that is true. But why do I use the word below and not under? Because I'm talking about two things which are on one plane surface. So if both these photos were on the blackboard, I would say the red photo is below the black one. If this was on a wall, I would again say the red photo is below the black one. But suppose I have a table here and the black photo is somewhere here, but the red photo is lying somewhere here. Could I say the red photo is below the black the black one no i will then use the word under because when i explain under i clearly mentioned that anything that is you know under a three-dimensional object will always have an under used in it but when i'm talking about a plain surface and i'm comparing the levels of two things it is always the word below Okay then, let's move on to the next sentence which is the temperature has dropped below freezing point. So here again, I use the word below when I want to talk about the level of temperature. So I've talked about the level of temperature being below freezing point. Maybe I want to talk about the level, uh, the sea level. So I can say that the diver went 100 feet below sea level. That's quite possible. I could also talk about, um, you know, the level of altitude. So I can, that, that is the height, of course. And I can say the plane lost control and went immediately 100 feet, you know, below 100 altitude below. So I'm talking about your the level of temperature, the sea level and the level of altitude. Um, and then you have the last context where you use below when I talk about things that are mentioned later. So let's see a sentence which is Read the instructions below, not under, read the instructions below before you start. Now, when I say I use the word below when I'm talking about things that happen later or are mentioned later, I am saying that I use below because I know there are certain things that I need to, you know, consider, certain things that I need to read before I start my next action so maybe i'm sitting in an exam and i've got to write you know give the exam but i need to consider things that are mentioned at you know a later stage so before i start my exam i have to read the instructions which are mentioned 
after you know a page or maybe after two pages before I start doing something okay so now that we've learned below let's talk about the other two words which are beneath and underneath all right now let's look at the last two pair of words which is beneath and underneath and see how they are used the first sentence says they slept beneath the blankets so the first context in which I use the word beneath is talking about being covered by something so now you are sleeping beneath the blankets so what I'm actually saying is I am being covered by the blankets maybe I could also say that she hid beneath the water she was beneath the surface of the water so I wanted to hide from somebody looking at me I will want it to be covered by the surface of the water so I I just go dip in and I'm covered by the surface of water so that is nothing but being covered by something moving on to the next context we talk about using the word beneath when we are talking about a person's emotions a person's feelings or maybe their actions so a sentence like this which goes beneath it all he still loves her so maybe we're talking about a couple who you know gets into a lot of arguments a lot of petty fights but beneath it all which means beneath all the the emotions the feelings the drama they still love each other so we're talking about beneath because we're talking about a person's feelings his emotions and all the drama in between and then you have a sentence like she treats people as if they are beneath her now here the word beneath talks about people of a low social position or someone you want to talk about when you find them very disgusting I could say something like the guy is offensive he is completely beneath me that is a very high-handed way of saying it but we talk about people being beneath us when we're talking about people who have a low social position compared to us and we talk about people who we don't like who we find very disgusting very offensive so apparently she somebody treats people as if they are beneath her so that's how the word beneath is used in these three main ways and then the last word underneath is simply an exaggeration of the word under so it is the word under but it is exaggerated which means I could use underneath and under you know I can replace them with one another but why do I use the word underneath you know sometimes a sentence like the ball was underneath the sofa could I say the ball was under the sofa yes I could because we're talking about three-dimensional objects so when I talk about three-dimensional objects you know that I can use the word under but underneath is more exaggerated because I want to give um, you know uh, you know more expression or you know just emote or you know talk about it in a more casual way so an emoted way an emotive way of saying something so maybe I was looking for the ball all over and then I find it underneath the sofa so somebody somebody asks me where did you find the ball I said the ball was underneath the sofa so I am saying that in a more exaggerated way and therefore I use the word underneath instead of under because under is also fine so that's it for the lesson on the usage of the word under below underneath and beneath I hope you found it very useful uh, do drop in your comments I'll be back with some more lessons until then this is me saying goodbye